So to start off with, we're going to write sort of the steps solving for x in logarithmic equations. Now, don't write this first one down, but I'm going to give you a really simple logarithmic equation to solve for. We want log base 2 of x equals 3. So if we had a very simplistic, the most simple logarithmic equation we could think of, it would just be something like log 2 of x equals 3. It's 8. Well, how do we figure out that it's 8? Again, if we use our definition of a logarithm, and we say, well, what does this all mean? The base is 2, the exponent is 3, the answer is x. And as soon as we change it with our definition, it becomes really obvious what the answer is. And this is going to be a key step in solving for logarithmic equations. This step right here is using the definition and changing to exponential form. So that's sort of our guiding principle for solving log equations. We know we have to figure out a way that we can change it to exponential form. Now, they're not always going to be as straightforward as this one. As we can see in the example that we're going to do, our example has more than one logarithm in it. And changing to exponential form only works when it looks like this, when we have a single logarithm. So as far as our steps go for solving for x in log equations, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our log laws to write the equation with a single log. So all of that work that we did earlier in the chapter where we were just, we learnt log laws and then sometimes I made you expand them, sometimes I made you write them as a single log, and at that time I said, we are just practicing our skills so later on we're going to be able to use them. We've already seen the use of expanding logs because we needed to do that to solve all of our exponential equations. We needed to expand completely to get that exponent out in front. And now, when solving log equations, we really need to know how to write things as a single log. So the other skill that we were practicing. Because once you've written it as a single log, then you're going to be able to change using the definition you'll be able to change it to exponential form. And once it's in exponential form you could just solve for x. So once it's in exponential form, it'll be in a way that you'll, you can use your previous algebra skills to solve for x. The last thing you have to do, though, in an exponential equation, I mean, sorry, in a logarithmic equation, these will usually be non-calculator. So unlike our exponential equations where you could just plug it in to find out if you're right, we won't be able to do that because you're going to have a non-calculator. But the fourth thing that you always need to do is you need to check for extraneous roots. Because they happen, yeah. Because you can't take the logarithm of a negative. If we think about our log graph, there's an asymptote at x equals 0, and there's nothing to the left of it. Log, of neg log base 10 of negative 3 doesn't exist. It's an error. You can't take the logarithm of a negative number. 
So sometimes you're going to get an answer that appears to be right, but when you plug that answer back into your equation, you find out that it was an extraneous root. This looks like loa. Log. There we go. So let's look at our example here. Our goal is to change it to exponential form. The way that it's written right now, we can't change it to exponential form because it isn't a single logarithm. So our first goal is, can we combine the logs to write it as a single logarithm? Is there a log law that I can put those two logs on the left together? And what would that be? What would I have to do to them? Yeah, it's adding, right? And adding is like multiplying inside a log. So inside it would be 9x times x equals 4. And so now we have a single logarithm. We have a lot of stuff inside that logarithm, but it is a single logarithm. So now we can go to step two. We can change this to exponential form. The base is, change to green, the base is three, the exponent is four, and the answer is nine x squared. Three to the four from your powers chart is 81, divide both sides by 9, take the square root of both sides and we get x is equal to plus or minus 3. So we have two possibilities, x is either minus 3 or plus 3. Now when we've solved for x, so we've done step 3, usually step 3 is really relatively straightforward because it's going to use the mathematics that you've learned before. Step four, we now have to check for extraneous roots. For checking for extraneous roots, you just have to find out whether or not you ever get a negative inside of a logarithm. And you always go back to your original equation. So let's do the positive one first, when x is equal to three. If I plug three into the first log, I will get nine times three. That would mean I would get a 27 inside there. That's fine. Don't have to worry about it. It's not a negative number. Don't have to figure it out. Don't have to verify by actually figuring out the value. Just have to say, that's a positive number. I'm good. Second log, if I plug in a 3, I get log 3 of 3. It's fine. It's a positive number. No problem. So since both of those are fine, we know that that one works. Or at least if we made no arithmetic mistakes along the way, it works. When we try negative 3, log 3 of 9 times negative 3, this would be negative 27. We don't have to do anything more. We already know that that one's extraneous. You just have to find a negative inside of log once to find out it's ex extraneous. I mean, in this example, if we were to go up and plug negative 3 into the second one, we get a negative inside that one as well but it just has to happen once. Maybe we should put in here, you can't take the log of a negative because there's an asymptote at x equals zero. We could add, you can't take the log of a negative or zero. It has to be a positive number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, that could happen that way. It'll be, if you didn't check them all, you might miss it. It might work in the first log, but not in the second log. There's also some questions where you only get one answer, and that one answer doesn't work. About five years ago, the very first question on the final exam was a log equation. And it was a log equation where you did all the work, you got your answer, and if you checked it, it didn't work. So you started off your exam with no solution for my first question. And I thought, this is, 
in a way, terrible, like, just, oh, there goes my confidence. I've got two hours and 45 minutes left, and I'm feeling terrible because the first one was no solution. So that has happened. I think they got feedback saying, maybe don't start with that question. Like, if you get that question, you know, question five or question six, it's okay. But to start off the very first question on their final ex provincial exam to find out there's no solution, sort of like, oh. So we'll look at some of those as well because they can happen. Okay, questions for practice, and we're going to do example two as well, and then we're going to practice some of these. Three, four, and nine. 